Welcome to Bernal, a small town about four hours north of Mexico City. Bernal's charming streets can be found in the great state of Querétaro. It was voted a magic pueblo in 2007. Bernal is famous for its giant monolith, but even more so it's famous for its gorditas, which are undoubtedly the best in Mexico. Gorditas are little corn pockets that can be stuffed with lots of delicious fillings, like potatoes and chorizo. You can order yours stuffed with cactus, mushrooms, beans, ground beef, shredded pork and red sauce, fried pig skin, or peppers and cream sauce. Make sure to add a dab of the house salsa. And if you're crazy like me, you'll throw a whole bunch in your gordita without trying how spicy it is first. Some people prefer sopes, which always come with beans and cheese on the top. Never take these to go. They're infinitely better when they're hot off the grill. The word gorditas literally translates to little chubby things, and the secret to their flavor lies in the fact that cheese, chiles, lard, and powdered fried pork skin are mixed into the corn dough. Guys, you can't leave Bernal without eating at least 20 gorditas. It's amazing how such a simple recipe won an award for one of my best Mexican food experiences ever. Stuffing myself full of gorditas made it quite a bit harder to climb to the top of this giant monolith that juts up right above Bernal. Okay, if you're going to be climbing or swimming, perhaps 20 gorditas isn't such a good idea after all. Next time you're in Central Mexico, hit me up and I'll let you know how to get to this restaurant that has the make-it-yourself salsa tray. This restaurant provides you with all the tomatoes, chili peppers, and seasonings you'll need to make your own personalized salsa. Don't start throwing random peppers in there though, or you'll end up with a salsa that's so spicy that the friends you came with will accuse you of trying to kill them. I can't believe that my friends let me invent a salsa for the whole table. I have to admit, I got carried away and I started throwing every colorful ingredient I saw into the mix. I added lots of garlic, onions, both red and green tomatoes, and enough chili peppers to make a gringo cry. Wow, I never would have guessed we'd be adding a little bit of beer to this sauce. Okay, lo pongo ya? Have you ever put beer in your salsa? Look, the restaurant even provides an old-fashioned molcajete for you to crush the salsa up in, just like Grandma used to do before the electric blender was invented. So this one here is the habanero. I didn't put that one in there. I didn't want to ruin the whole salsa with it being so hot that we couldn't even eat it. So I decided to keep these guys out of here. Not today. I don't think I want my head to explode. And then we've got these little, what well, we would just call little green tomatoes, but here they're called tomatillos. And then we also use red tomatoes as well. So we used a mix of the two. Often salsas have one or the other, but sometimes they have both. So this would be fun to do at a party. Get a big mocajete and have a bunch of friends over and they decide just how spicy they want the salsa to be. <laughs> one thing that's important to notice, look how the chiles that I've showed you and the uh, jitomates and the tomatoes, are they're burnt because they've been put on the grill. Here in Mexico, the chiles and the uh, tomatoes are always grilled. Even the garlic is grilled before it goes in the salsa. Right. Let's look at how our salsa is turning out. Even without the habanero peppers, this salsa turned out pretty darn hot. But the beer was a nice touch, though. And then the food started showing up. Look, I had to get a shot of this. A splendid salad in Mexico? Mexico is famous for its food, but not so much for its salad. I'm glad this restaurant had such a nice one. Seeing this footage is making me hungry. Check out this main course. It's a sizzling molcajete piled high with grilled meats and veggies. This tower of barbecued shrimp, chicken, ribs, and fish revealed layer after layer of surprises. Oh, how I wish I could teleport back to this restaurant every single day for lunch. This tower of deliciousness was also full of grilled green onions, steak, a fried egg, and a layer of melted cheese, just in case it wasn't already heavenly enough. You know, I dare you to find a better Mexican restaurant. Like I said, I can tell you how to get there, and if you ask me, just this one restaurant is a good enough reason to book a flight and head down to Mexico ASAP. After we polished that off, I went into an amazing food coma and didn't wake up till after a nice long siesta. Look at all these little baby cactus in here, but they'll still poke you. 
Welcome to Central Mexico's Cactus Museum, where people come to learn about hundreds of rare cactus. It was amazing to learn about all the medicinal properties these cactus have. And check this one out, known as the grandfather cactus. How interesting that it has white hair and lives to be hundreds of years old, older than any cactus that doesn't have this grandfather style hairdo. Needless to say, the Cactus Museum is not the kind of place I would want to stumble around at night looking for a light switch. So I'm about to eat a cactus chili, but it's not really a chili, it's a fruit. It's really good. Yo podría picarlos mientras ver una peli como tener una bolsa y ya. But always remember, please don't touch the plants. While walking around Bernal, I found a field of nopales, an edible cactus. Now, later today I'm gonna have a cactus gordita and see just how good they are. You know, the texture is a little bit rubbery, but they have amazing health properties for you. So these cactus here behind me, they're not an accident. Here you see the maguey, that gives a life-giving water that can be fermented into beer, but they call it agua miel, the water is honey water. It's so delicious and kind of like a coconut. It has tons of electrolytes and really can keep you alive in the desert better than normal water could. And right behind it are nopales. So this is kind of a food forest you've got going on here. Both of these cactus uh, help you sustain life in the, in the environment that is so, so hard to live in. So this is an My friend's dad was nice enough to show me how to harvest the sap of the maguey cactus. This highly nutritious sap is known as agua miel, or honey water. It pools up in the cactus every sunrise and every sunset as the cactus leaves suck moisture out of the air. This honey water was fermented by the Aztecs to make a sort of cactus beer. We'll take this home and we'll drink it, or maybe we'll ferment it and turn it into cactus beer. <laughs> Next, I got to see my friend's dad turn some of these into some of these. Mmm, Mexican lamb chops. Sorry lambs, you guys are cute, but even more so, you're delicious. Just a little bit of salt and pepper was dry rubbed onto these bad boys, and then once we took them off the grill, in true Mexican fashion, we squeezed the lime over them and served them up with guacamole and fresh cilantro. Here I'm walking through a small Mexican pueblo to mill a bucket of corn for grandma so she can teach us to make tamales. Along the way, I found a guy deep frying a vat full of pig guts. If that doesn't make you hungry, what does? This was also the day I bought my giant sombrero. Hooray for giant sombreros, especially when they only cost $4. Today we're going to be milling both black corn and yellow corn so we can make two different types of tamales. I don't know why they call it black. It looks more blue-purple aquamarine corn, if you ask me. Before electric mills, women used to grind up the corn on big rocks called metates. But today we're lazy and hungry, and we want to be eating tamales sooner than later. So here we're going through step two of making masa, but this is for a style of tamale. It's not for tortillas, so it's not as fine. It's a little bit thicker to give the tamale more texture. Now we're keeping the black corn and the yellow corn separated. We're going to make two different types of tamales, I imagine. I'm excited to taste the difference between the black corn and the yellow corn. This is the stuff we've been eating. So we're here on the other day. It's like a masaje for a masaje for my mama. Now let's head over to Grandma's house and learn to make these tamales. My name is Eric Kennan, and I love Mexican food.